Hello, and welcome to the sixth Spotlight on Safety Video. For the past 20 years, we've made significant strides in rail safety. Now it's time to replicate that success in employee health. So today, we're discussing why health and well-being is important and exploring what industry needs to do to prioritise it alongside safety. We'll also cover some of the ways RSSB can be your partner in creating a healthier and happier workforce. And I'm talking today with Neve McMahon and Charlotte Sweet. So hello. Hi. Hi. So Neve, a healthy and happy workforce is essential for a safe and efficient railway. But what does health and well-being mean for us in the rail industry? Rail employees face a unique set of challenges that affect both their mental well-being and their physical health. These are wide-ranging and some examples are balancing shift work, impact of rail reform and exposure to traumatic events. These concerns are extensive, demonstrated by the fact that sickness absence rates are nearly twice the national average. Helping rail employees manage their health and well-being is more important now than ever before. Neve, why is it important for both employees and companies in the rail industry to prioritise health and well-being? There are lots of reasons to take health and well-being seriously. Most importantly, we all want happy and healthy working lives for ourselves, our friends and our colleagues. But also the health and well-being of rail employees can have significant impact on the rail companies. In a 2019 report, RSSB estimated that the total annual cost of impaired health in rail was nearly 900 million. And the 2021 Rail Industry Mental Wellbeing Survey showed that staff were six times more likely to be absent due to a health problem caused or made worse by work than a workplace accident. These reports reveal how poor health and well-being lead to significant financial cost and impact reliability and resilience on the network. The industry is experiencing strong financial pressure and improving health and well-being could help improve overall financial performance. Employers have a responsibility to do the right thing, not only for their employees, but also for the communities they serve and indeed the rest of society. The railway can impact health and well-being in a variety of ways. These range from the obvious impact of sound emissions and poor air quality to the less tangible, but importantly still measurable, impact of trauma and the social value that rail offers. When it comes to recruitment, having a positive reputation for supporting health and well-being can be a powerful draw. That's especially true for the younger generation who place a high value on workplace culture. Looking at retention, it's very clear that employees whose health and well-being is respected are very likely to stay in their role longer. How can industry improve employee health and well-being, potentially replicating the success seen in safety improvements? The key word here is data. In railway safety, data from across the industry has been the vital basis of improvements for many years. We have been collecting data from everyone, encouraging everyone to share it and analyse it, and this gives us rich insights into the real causes of safety issues. Now, a similar data-led approach has been taken for health and well-being. This approach is encouraging industry to unlock the same benefits in health and well-being that we've harnessed for safety. There is a lot to be gained, as better health and well-being can lead to higher staff morale and productivity and reduced absences. The need for change is getting more urgent. Investing in employee health and well-being is key. Chronic diseases, ill health and an ageing workforce constrain resources. A proactive approach can help mitigate these costs while fostering a healthier and happier workforce. So where do we start and what does industry need to do? To effectively manage employee health, we must apply health surveillance, which is required by law. But this is hard to do with inconsistent and incomplete data. To tackle this and support rail to foster a data-driven approach to health and well-being, we developed the Health and Wellbeing Data Hub. It's an innovative cross-industry dashboard for reporting health and well-being data. Users can monitor performance over time, compare themselves with other companies and with national ONS data. Today, the Health and Wellbeing Data Hub is still in its pilot phase and we're developing plans for its rollout. So Neve, why is data so important for health and wellbeing? Data-driven insights will help companies manage employee health in better ways. They will be empowered to make informed investment decisions and improve health and wellbeing in rail. Using data means we replace guesswork and reveal the real causes of problems for targeted action. Charlotte, how can people use the Health and Wellbeing Data Hub? 
Now that the prototype has been tested, the rollout to the wider industry will start later this year in 2024. So Charlotte, what broader health and wellbeing considerations should we prioritise to be prepared for the future? To prepare for the future, we need to extend our focus beyond the workforce. We need to understand how to protect the health and wellbeing of passengers and others affected by our industry. This will ensure rail continues to do the right thing ethically, legally and economically and attracts new talent in the long term. It's also about growing revenue on the network by improving performance and reliability. Improving health and wellbeing reduces absences and delays, which in turn will bring more customers to the railway. The industry's sustainable rail blueprint addresses many of these issues. Specifically, it champions health and wellbeing through people-centred rail, with the strategic aim that rail supports and champions health and wellbeing. The sustainable rail blueprint also covers social value for Strive Towards a railway that's committed to measuring and maximising social value. This recognises not only the impact that rail has on colleagues and passengers, but also the quantifiable value that rail adds for people, places and the economy. So Charlotte, what does industry need to do to realise these potential benefits? Industry has worked together to develop the rail health and safety strategy. Health and wellbeing is one of the five key risk areas that industry will address through the strategy, with the goal that health and wellbeing is managed on par with safety. To achieve this goal, we'll collaborate with industry to continue to consider the health risks associated with its activities, standards, decision-making processes and its culture. Data is essential for all of these. Charlotte, can you explain what role rail's culture will play? Prioritising health and wellbeing is a shared responsibility. Culturally, rail must foster an environment where everybody takes responsibility for health and wellbeing. This demonstrates the positive impact work can have on people's overall wellbeing. We're committed to this vision and are actively supporting the Office of Rail and Road in developing guidance that helps companies to manage fatigue more effectively. We will also help them tailor fatigue risk management plans that address individual business needs. So in summary, Charlotte, what are the key priorities for creating a healthier railway? Healthy employees are the cornerstone of a healthy, safe and attractive railway. By prioritising employee wellbeing, we invest not only in them, but also in a thriving rail industry that benefits everyone, employees, passengers and surrounding communities. This is a vision shared by the Sustainable Rail Blueprint and the Rail Health and Safety Strategy. We have the opportunity to revolutionise rail's approach to health and wellbeing by collecting data and acting on the insights we gather. By prioritising employee wellbeing, we not only invest in them, we also reap the benefits of a healthier and more productive rail industry. So Neve and Charlotte, thank you both for guiding us through the industry's plans for health and well-being. A very clear and compelling call to arms for the rail sector on a key topic. <music>